Okay guys, today we're going to be talking about why you should buy survival knives. Now, a little while ago, I created a video that was entitled, Why You Shouldn't Buy Any More Bushcrafting or Any More Survival Knives. And that video has since stirred up some controversy on the channel with me as a bushcrafter and just that general topic as a whole. So with this video, I'm going to be talking about a few things, primarily discussing my core philosophy of that video, because the core philosophy really hasn't changed that much since that video. I also want to talk about why on this channel I still continue to get knives and why getting more knives really isn't as bad as some of you make it out to believe or some people make it out to believe and really why why I continue to get more knives from a YouTubing standpoint. So without any further ado guys, please do not forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to become a part of the awesome group, <laughs> the awesome Alaskan group, and also so that you never miss any of this content. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. So as I mentioned in so as I mentioned this video, I want to focus on why you should buy more bushcrafting and survival knives. So before we get to that point, though, I want to talk about the core philosophy of what I was trying to get at when I first made my video of why you shouldn't buy any more bushcrafting and survival knives. Now, when I made that video, it was primarily out of a frustrated point or angle where I was tired of seeing and being proliferated or attacked with ads for bushcrafting, survival, outdoor gear, whether that be hatchets, saws, knives that claimed to be the ultimate survival tool, the tool that makes you a better survivalist, bushcrafter, camper, hiker, backpacker, whatever. They would take these tools, whether it be a knife, a hatchet, an axe, a saw, and chalk them full of neat features, neat designs, and pack cool features, you know, or products into a tool and claim that that tool, if you carry it or if you use it, will make you a better uh, whatever in the wilderness. And in my original video, I was trying to stress the point that if you're going out and buying knives especially, but really any tool for that matter, whether it be a saw or an axe or a hatchet, that's claimed to be the ultimate tool that will make you a better bushcrafter or survivalist, that you should not buy those tools. And that ultimately, when we talk about being a good woodsman, it's about you using a tool and making that tool work for you and using it enough so that you build familiarity with that tool so that you can confidently use it in many different situations, I guess. The ultimate uh, kind of concept is that the tool doesn't make you, you make the tool. And so that was what I was really going at with that, uh, with that original video, is that don't necessarily be fooled by a knife that claims to be the end all to be all. It really comes down to the end user's skill, the end user's experience, and the end user's willingness to make that tool work in whatever situation they have to. That's really the core of it. And what I was trying to focus on and break down to make it easy to understand this is just saying, choose one tool, you know, buy a Cold Steel SRK and use the hell out of that Cold Steel SRK until you learn how to properly make a knife work and function in different situations, circumstances, settings, and environments. And once you've done that, then you will be really knowledgeable and experienced with any tool you pick up at that point. So that was the core conversation and core philosophy of that drove that video or was the behind the scenes of that video. It was make a tool work for you instead of thinking that a tool will make you a better user. Now that being said, that leads us to the second point, the point of this video, and that is why you should buy more bushcrafting knives, bushcrafting survival and outdoor knives. Now, once again, it all comes back to why. Why are you buying that tool? 
And I think there are good reasons and I think there are bad reasons. Now, we talked about those bad reasons, you know, buying tools because you think they will make you better at an outdoor activity. But there are good reasons. And I think the two biggest good reasons are, one, if you like to collect knives. And that is something that I like to do. It's something that a lot of people in this community liked to do as well. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. There are plenty of collectors of guns, of knives, watches, cars, trucks, motorcycles, you name it, there's probably a collector of it. And that in and of itself, being a collector of knives is not a problem. If you like to put your money into knife making companies, so long as they are quality companies and you're not supporting cheap Chinese labor, you know, it's really not that bad. And honestly, you could be putting your money into worse things. So from that standpoint and that perspective, if you like to collect knives, I say collect on. In fact, a lot of what I you know, I like to collect knives, and I still continue to collect knives. In fact, I've put together lists of my favorite bushcrafting and survival knives, and I've made videos about that, and they've been very well received, and a lot of people get to see the tools that really excite me. And so from a collector standpoint, there's absolutely nothing wrong, and honestly, especially once you learn the fundamental knife skills of how to make tools work for you in the woods, it's actually a lot of fun to take other knives out, or other tools out, maybe something like, you know, a Topps uh, Tom Brown tracker, you know, something that you might not necessarily think as being the best survival tool, and, you know, plug it into your mindset and try to make it work for you. And so that is, you know, an option and really something that is a valid reason to buy more knives about. And once again, this... I'm not trying to discourage people from buying knives to hurt the knife making industry. I doubt I could even do that in the first place, but really it was just so that you don't get caught into the marketing hype. And honestly, a lot of those knives that are marketed as, you know, tools that make you better survivalists are those cheap Chinese pieces of garbage, things like the Bear Grylls survival knife, things such as the the ultimate survival tips, the UST MSK1. You know, these are cheap knives that sometimes go for expensive prices, but are really not that great tools to begin with. They're things that certainly collectors of knives would not be interested in. So that's the first standpoint. The second standpoint, and the primary reason why I continue to buy knives to review and test and use on the YouTube channel is for experience. And this is a point that, once again, is hard to illustrate intentionally, but unintentionally comes across. And so in my first video of why you shouldn't buy any bush, any more bushcraft knives, I was using the tops, or sorry, the Chris Reeve Knives Pacific. And I still love this tool absolutely to death. I have modified it since that video, and it is a great tool. Absolutely no problems with this guy. It's a great survival knife. Love it to death. And I continue to talk about this knife and will continue to talk about it. But if I came to you guys and in a review or in a video tried to convince you that the Chris Reeve Knives Pacific was the only knife you need and it's the only knife that I own, it would inherently reduce my credibility because if you only own one knife or if you only use one knife, that means that you really don't have experience across the board. So how can I come to you and tell you that this is a good knife or that I firmly believe in it as a survival knife? Well, there is part of it being its own personal test and making sure that it doesn't fail catastrophically. But the other thing is being able to hold it up to a standard, you know, being able to take things like this Cold Steel SRK or things like this Battle Horse Knives Battle Lore and put it up against this Pacific. How do I know this Pacific performs as well as it does? Because I have other knives and experience with other tools that indicate that this Pacific performs better than these other tools I have also used. So I try to acquire new tools and use new tools because it helps broaden my experience and my scope of understanding of what knife, what a good knife should be, how a good knife should act, what a good knife should look like, and those types of features. Once again, you know, if I had never used any other bushcrafting knife, I would have never known that, you know, this knife in particular, 
in particular the Pacific, you know, having a rounded spine was very detrimental to striking a ferro rod. So, you know, that later led me to modifying this knife to make it better for my uses. But once again, I didn't entirely, you know, learn that from this knife. There was the use of other knives, such as the Garberg, the Legome, the Battle Ore, that all have squared off 90 degree spines that strike ferro rods better than the Pacific. And I learned from those knives how to modify this Pacific to make it better. So that's what I mean when I talk about experience, being able to use multiple platforms, multiple tools to learn what I'm looking for and what is really the best uh, option for me or things that I can do to make a already very good option better. So experience is the biggest thing and that's the probably the biggest point that I would bring to you guys as a reason to continue to buy knives. And once again, it shouldn't be reckless. It shouldn't be crazy. You know, you don't want to, you know, use your child's college savings to go buy a whole bunch of knives. But having a healthy collection and being a collector of knives is not a problem. You know, just limiting yourself to one tool, especially in the beginning, I think is important and necessary. I think is important and necessary because having the experience and how to use a tool is more important than just having a lot of tools. But as you grow in experience, it is nice to diversify and use other tools so that you can get a broader spectrum and understanding of what you want and what a good knife should perform like. And so that is the ultimate point that I want to stress is in why you should buy more bushcrafting and survival knives is really it goes back to experience and once again me from a youtubing standpoint it's also a level of credibility if i come to you guys and say you know yeah i've used two knives in my entire bushcrafting you know nine years of bushcrafting some would admire that and admittedly it is a semi-admirable trait that you've only used a couple knives but how can i really honestly and earnestly tell you what a good knife should be or should act like if I really don't have that much experience. I mean, a Mora Garberg or a Mora Clipper or Companion are good knives and I think they perform very well. But if that was all that my experience had and I had never used anything else, then I would be very limited in my ability to tell you anything else other than what I know about those knives and other features of other knives. And so, that's what I ultimately come back to as a YouTuber. And while some people may see that, you know, me doing more reviews or me continuing to buy knives as a characteristic, a bad characteristic or a negative trait, uh, personally, I definitely don't release a lot of reviews and I don't put an emphasis on this channel in acquiring knives. I think there are definitely other channels out there that put a much higher emphasis on being able to just they just put out a steady stream of knife review after knife review after knife review. And I do think that there is a limit of reason where if someone, if some channel, all they ever do is put out gear reviews, I do think that that becomes toxic. So I do think it becomes toxic and I do think that it becomes not beneficial at that point. But once again, Continuing to acquire knives isn't a bad thing, and continuing to expand your knowledge and experience with tools, whether that be hatchets, axes, saws, knives, uh, you know, any type of tool you use in the wilderness is not a bad thing. It is good. Of course, like I said, within reason. You don't want to go crazy and overboard and spend thousands of dollars, you know, all at once buying, you know, like a hundred knives, but getting out there and using multiple tools over the course of, you know, many years or a handful of years is a good thing. And I think beneficial to the experience of any woodsman. So that in the long and the short is why you should buy more bushcrafting, survival, and outdoor knives. Just once again, don't be disillusioned and don't be, you know, played or don't be disillusioned and don't be fooled by the knife makers and companies out there that try to get your dollars by saying that they have a tool that will make you a better woodsman. None of these tools, whether it's the SRK, the Pacific, you know, the Battle Lore, the Aurora, you know, none of these tools are going to make you a better survivalist, but you can use them 
to better your survival odds. So anyways guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this video, hopefully it's been informative, and hopefully this answers questions that some have thought that I've been dodging or that I'm dodgy about. I certainly have not been dodging them, but I wanted to take the time to make an articulated response that answers a lot of questions and provides some valuable knowledge and experience alongside that, rather than just commenting a quick reply or a quick response that is not very beneficial to the whole community. So anyways, guys, as always, God bless, and I'm out.